Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and this video is a guide for Assassin's Rogues PvP for patch 715. This patch has had a few changes for Assassination Rogues, and this video will cover everything you need to know from talents, honor talents, some of the macros you might want to use for PvP, openers, and the regular playstyle for Assassination in terms of PvP combat. This video is perfect for anybody starting out Assassination or is wanting to learn all the new things happening to Assassination Rogues. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, let's get right to it. For the first part of the guide, I do want to talk about some of the different changes that have happened to Assassination Rogues in this recent patch. One of the general rogue changes is faint not cost 35 energy, so be sure to watch out for your energy when popping defensives. Rogues also have gained Shroud of Concealment, but recently Blizzard disabled Shroud of Concealment for PvP. So rogues have it, but you can only use it in Battlegrounds. Now for some assassination specific changes. All damage done by most assassination abilities has been increased by 7%. Assassination has also gained blind as an extra CC during this patch, which is very exciting, making assassination even more viable for arenas and battlegrounds. The nerf to slow for crippling poisons, so now it is 30% slow instead of 50% slow, so be sure to adjust to that on your own time, but you might notice this slow, especially if you play assassination. They changed how rupture works, so your combo points no longer determine how powerful your bleed is, but rather how long the bleed is gonna last for. So even if you put rupture for just 2 combo points, you'll still get the most amount of damage out of it. Now for the talents. In the first tree we have Master Poisoner, which increases your damage done by poisons by 30% and the non damage effects by 20%. It doesn't really buff the slow, the slow goes from 30% to 36% slow, which isn't much, but the damage upgrade is definitely nice and synergizes really well with your artifact weapon and its traits. Elaborate Planning got a slight nerf, it's not 50% damage increase but 12, but with the general assassination buffs, this isn't a terrible talent either. So, whichever way you enjoy, Master Poisoner or Elaborate Planning, it's really up to you. I feel that Master Poisoner ends up doing a little bit more for you for PvP, but Elaborate Planning is an option. In the next tree, Subterfuge is the best option, allowing you to put up more than one Garrod on enemies, buffs your Garrod to 125% damage increase, which is an update from the last patch, a definite buff, allows you to throw a little bit more CC in the opener, overall solid talent. In the next tree, Vigor is the best option, Deeper Stratagem got nerfed, Anticipation isn't much better, and Vigor still gives you that extra energy from the start and slightly more energy regeneration, which is still useful and the best option to this day. In the next tree, ultimately, Elusiveness is the best option for most PvP situations, but Cheat Death can be used in Battlegrounds, since now it resets every time you die. So you can have some fun shenanigans with Cheat Death, being able to be difficult to kill every time you die in BGs. In the next tree, Internal Bleeding is the best, as it offers you bleed with your kidney, which then returns well because you gain energy every time bleeds are up. Also, it has been buffed in terms of the bleed damage, so the more bleeds you have, the more damage you do, the more energy regeneration you have as Assassin. Now, in the level 90 tree, you have a couple options. Alacrity isn't terrible, but it's not amazing either. It did get buffed, so you'll be able to gain haste a little bit faster, which basically means more energy regeneration generation, which is very nice in arena situations and certain BG situations, but there are some other options. Exsanguinate isn't really a buff because it doesn't increase the damage of your abilities, but it does allow your bleeds to tick faster, and most of your bleeds did get buffed this patch. It's not a direct buff for damage, so I can see it be used in BGs, but not maybe for arenas where you want more damage. Agonizing Poison is tricky because they did nerf Paladins in terms of the poison cleanses, so if you're going against characters that cannot cleanse poisons easily, Agonizing is honestly the best option. But it is gimmicky, so it depends who you're going against. If you're not sure, Alacrity is probably the best option. Venom Rush is probably the best option in the next stream. It does allow you more energy regeneration, which has infinite value. But if you're struggling with common points, then you might want to try out Mark for Death. Mark for Death is always great. It gives you 5 free common points, and it's a 1 minute cooldown. Resets if you kill the target. Allows you a much easier time to set up your bleeds and your stuns, and to really line up your burst combo on an enemy. Now for the Honor Talents. If you are a non-orc and you are a horde, Gladius Medallion is the best option. If you are however a smork, you can go Relentless. If you are an alliance and a human, you can go Adaptation, Relentless or Gladius Medallion, it's really up to you. In the next row we have Reinforced Armor, which is probably the best option in most situations. It allows you to deal with melee and range alike, and allows you to be able to take on enemies no matter what kind of abilities they use. But if you are struggling with melee for any reason, then sparring is a better option. Sparring should be used if melee giving you trouble, or if you're facing melee cleaves in arenas. Should be used against most warriors, windwalkers, and most specs of rogues, except assassination. 
And an extra we have maneuverability, which is a solid choice and should be used in most situations, allowing your sprint to also take off all slows on you, allowing you to be able to move around a little bit easier, great against most mages and most classes that slow you. Cut to the chase can be used against ferals and rogues and in some BG situations where you're expecting the healers to use mobility increases in order to run away from you, allowing you to chase after people and have a lot of movement speed if you are getting kited by a feral. In the next row, unfair advantage is ultimately the best option as it increases the effectiveness of your critical strikes, allowing you more bursts, more sustained damage, basically more damage as long as you have more health than the enemy. Also helps out a ton when you're bursting on an enemy in the opener where you have all the advantages. And the next row Deadly Brew is ultimately the best option as it allows no matter what deadly poison you use to apply Wound Poison, which is a powerful tool in most PvP situations which suppresses healing, which is a must use in arenas. And the last row Creeping Venom is the best option. It's been a bit of a confusion between System Shock and Creeping Venom, but Creeping Venom has infinite value as long as enemies are moving around and allows for a little bit more spread pressure, has more effectiveness than System Shock ever since the nerfs. Openers are extremely important for assassination rogues and knowing how to use a proper opener in different situations helps out a ton. This right here is a basic opener that establishes to bleed to the enemy while stun locking him. Cheap shot into Garou, top it off with mutilate into rupture. Now you got two bleeds, energy regeneration, the enemy will stun the whole time. So this is probably one of the best openers for a lot of you guys to just practice. Every time you open on somebody is to go throughout rotation. From there you can start building calm points and throwing right kidneys and envenoms. This next opener is best against caster DPS. First of all, you garrote them to lock them out of their spells, you mutilate to generate calm points, you top it off with a cheap shot as it stun locks them, you rupture, and the enemy is still stunned for a longer duration of CC with that topped off cheap shot. So you, from there you continue to spam mutilates until you generate calm points, and then from there you can either throw them in a kidney or throw in venom on them to apply damage and pressure to the enemy. This next opener works specifically good on healers that cannot stun you, so do not use it on monks or druids. So with this one you open up with Garot, you pop Mutilate and keep using Mutilate until you're about a 4 or 5 comma points, then you rupture the enemy. From here you can build up 2 Mutilates into a Kidney. Now the question is, what do you do after you get an opener on the enemy? Generally what you want to do after you establish at least 2 bleeds on the enemy, you want to build up combo points until they have about 4 or 5 and then you can choose to either throw the enemy into a kidney shot or hit him with an venom. If you want to stun lock and lock the enemy out and hold him in place, kidney is probably the best option. If you want to simply deal damage to them and you're not lining up for a stun, envenom is the best option. The best way to go about with openers is not to think of them as a strict rotation and think of them as separate abilities. If you want to lock your enemy down, you throw in a stun. If you want to silence them or apply a rote, you apply a rote. You want to usually build up until 4 or 5 comp points for a longer rupture and to build up comp points just use mutilates. If you can separate abilities you'll have a little bit more versatility in how you structure your openers. One of the best ways to force pressure on two different targets is to put two bleeds per target. So on the first target you will want to get a garrote and a rupture. Build comp points over the first one, take that momentum to the second target, build up comp points, throw in a second rupture on the second target, then build up comp points, and instead of using a weak garrote, just apply a kidney shot instead. This way you have two bleeds on two different targets, allowing you a lot of energy regeneration and a ton of force pressure if you're trying to let's say CC a healer while DPS in the DPS in an arena. The best way to burst the assassination can be done in an opener, but also can be done outside of it. Normally you want to stun lock the enemy, you want to apply garrote, you want to apply full rupture, you want to make sure you have no energy left, vendetta to refill your energy bar, throw in your artifact weapon, and after you throw an artifact weapon, make sure to keep hitting the enemy for your artifact weapon to continue dealing damage. Afterwards just generate calm points with mutilates and spin in venoms until the enemy is dead. You might get some random procs from your artifact weapon, and good for you if you do because it'll allow you to kill the enemy that much faster. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, but usually assassination damage with your vendetta and your artifact weapon is enough to kill a horse. So you should be using them as freely as you want to because they're fairly short cooldowns. One of the most useful macros in the game for assassination rogues is a shadow step kick macro. It'll require you to have a set focus on a target and is the least macros you should have for assassination, at least a step kick macro. So let's say you have one trained dummy and it's a DPS. You have one on the side and he's a healer and you want to make sure to catch his next heal. You set him as set focus and whenever the enemy starts casting a spell, you want to spam the shadow step kick macro so then you'll step to the enemy and you'll catch their cast locking them out of the tree, allowing you to maybe combo some CC afterwards, but mainly stopping the cast. 
Another macro that is very useful is another set focus macro, but this one is with a blind. Ever since Assassination Rogues got a blind as part of the toolkit, you are now able to blind your set focus target, allowing you a little bit more CC to prepare on an enemy, which is very useful and should be applied fairly often in BGs and arena situations. So start using those blinds. So what else can I say about Assassination in terms of PvP? Well this spec is all about dealing as much damage as possible, so the more damage you can deal to somebody, the better you're playing as Assassination. This spec definitely has some of the best defenses in terms of validity and effectiveness, so if you're able to use the defenses properly, then you should be just fine. Within your toolkit of blind, you should be able to throw enemies into a full CC, and some enemies might even shrink in the blind, so you might be able to force trinkets this way. So if you're able to force trinkets, learn your rotation, learn your burst properly, practice it, practice and practice some more, because of course, practice makes perfect. And whenever you're playing Assassination, don't think as much of spread pressure, I mean sometimes it's good to have spread pressure, but Assassination's majority of its damage comes from being able to hit one target and then train that target for as long as possible. The longer you are on one target, the better you'll perform in most cases. So stay on that target, keep staying on him, especially if you hit him with your artifact weapon. Because your artifact weapon damage is increased if you're hitting the target continuously, not because you just throw it on him once and just leave him be. So as assassination, you're not quite a feral druid and you're thinking maybe multiple bleeds, not quite as effective. I mean it's fairly effective but just not quite there. So just keep hitting where you're hitting, keep training him to the ground. Learn your abilities, learn your burst, the more damage you deal, the better you'll be off in most cases. And the most important part, just have fun playing Assassination. Hopefully this guide was everything you guys needed to know how to play Assassination. Go out there, make mistakes, learn from mistakes, get better, as everybody always had to go through the same stages as you guys, uh, some of you might have to. And hopefully you guys enjoy playing Assassination. 7.105 is going to be an exciting patch and Assassination might be ultimately the very best spec for this patch. So if you guys perfect it, get good at it and can play it properly, then most of you will see a massive increase in terms of effectiveness of yourselves as players when it comes to playing Assassin's. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.